So, laid out here before me on the table, we have it. Now, what you're looking at is a Queen Bee Pro. And this is essentially a work bee with a linear rail upgrade. Now, I didn't buy the full kit with the spindle, controller and drives included, because that would have pushed the price way higher than I wanted to. And I already had most of the other stuff I needed to complete it, so the only thing I bought is the mechanical kit. So, what's included in the kit are all the plates with nice B logos. We have all the fasteners. We have the NEMA 23 stepper motors. We have, of course, the linear rail bearing blocks. Over here, we have the linear rails. And this machine has linear rails on both the X, Y and the C axis. So that's really, really neat. And here we have all the aluminium extrusions. Now, what I did by extra that's not included in the mechanical kit is this, that's the spindle mount. And this is sized to fit a standard Makita or DeWalt router. Which I have one. And the drag chains. So I bought a full kit of drag chains as well. Because otherwise cable management is a complete mess. So here's the manual for assembly and it's fairly thick. You don't get this printed out in the kit. You have to print it out yourself from their website. And unfortunately it's not a PDF. It's actually a website so you have to print the website itself through Chrome or Firefox or whatever. So the formatting isn't that perfect. But I looked through it and I think it should be fairly easy to follow. We'll see how it goes. So, now I'm ready to start the spoiler board assembly. And just a quick note before I begin, I won't show you the full assembly. Like, I won't show you every nut and bolt on this entire build because that would take way too long and isn't that interesting. So I'll show you some highlights and uh, yeah, we'll see how it turns out. I just noticed something I want to show you. Every single bag is extremely neatly labeled. Every bag, every bearing, every tool, and all of these names correspond to the same names and the parts list in the manual. So this should be a lot easier than I thought. And now, I need these. I also heard some rumors that some of the people that ordered this from the, the same supplier anyway had problems with the extrusions not being tapped in the end. I don't know how well you can see that but if it's focused... Yeah anyway, every single one of mine that I've checked so far have been perfectly tapped. No problem there. First empty bag. Yeah, so there will be a bunch more of of this. So just to not bore you too early in the movie. Okay, so right now there will be a bunch more of, uh, of what you just saw. So to not bore you too early in this video series, because I'm planning to make three, maybe four videos of this build. And then of course, probably quite a lot of videos of actually using it. But like I said, to not bore you too early, let's do it like this. And we're back. So I've gotten quite a bit since the last clip. As you can see, the actual mounting frame for the spoiler board is complete. And I've also inserted the linear rails. Mm -hmm. 
into the first side of the y-axis and the only thing I really did here was install all the screws and the T-nuts first and then slide them into the rails. Now this piece in the middle here is actually loose. So this is a C-beam. This one will get clamped down by the end plates later. So what I did to install these rails is that the first rail I measured so it's completely parallel to the extrusion. I have 2.7 millimeters over here and over on this end. Then I made sure to install the second rail so that it's completely parallel to the first one. So here we have 74.80 and here we have 74.81 so we're actually 10 microns difference between the well the front and back side of the rail and that is well within any tolerance I can hope to have on this entire project. So the next step is to install these rails on the other side of the y-axis and then clean off all the grease used for rust protection during shipping before I install the carriages. So let's go. So now I've installed the second set of linear rails on the Y2 axis, or Y1 depending on how I put them. And I've also cleaned them off with some uh, red ethanol, or tea red. That's just general purpose degreaser and stove fuel available in Sweden. And this is all the crap that came off the rails. And this is both dirty old grease and metal shavings, and neither of those things are anything you want inside your bearing blocks. That will shorten the lifespan of both the rails themselves and the bearing blocks. So now I just have to find the correct bag and start installing them. So just a quick note of showing you the installation of this plate. Now almost all the screws I've gotten in this kit so far are crap. This is a decent tool, it's Proxon, so fairly high quality, regular, like, mechanical tool. These screws are made from cheese, or something of equivalent hardness. I think I have managed to strip the hex heads of like 80-90% of them. And that's without trying. The only ones so far that have been okay are the ones used to hold the linear rail in place. So if you want a really high quality assembly, I would suggest you change out all these screws before you start installation. And that one wasn't even tight. Nope. No, it was tight, it was just stripped out. So let's keep going. So now the Y axis assemblies are installed on a spoiler board frame. And it went by without any problem. Just more screws to install. Now the next step is installing the plates for the X axis. And those are these big ones. All these button head screws are for a 2.5mm allen key and since I just dropped my only 2.5mm allen key and uh, unfortunately can't seem to find it, uh, I think we're ending this video here 
and the next time I'll finish installing the x-axis assembly and installing all the stepper motors and in the third video because I think I'm gonna make this into a three-part series I'm gonna install all the electronics and hopefully 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 get it moving and since just a couple of days ago you can actually find me on Instagram as well I'll leave a link down in the description I haven't put much on there yet there are a couple of pictures of this build and I'm planning to document this a lot more as it progresses and if you just want more regular updates in the YouTube videos I suggest you check that out and until next time, if you like what you see, please let me know, leave a comment, send me an email. Uh, all the information will be down in the description. And uh, yeah, you can watch these in the meantime. They're not as good as this one. Just so you know. <laughs>